You also feel in your body. Feel in your body. Yeah, I mean, this is for all of us. And I want to offer to Walt specifically, right? So you're you're there just a few blocks away with this responsibility, caring for the responsibility. And then you had to navigate this moment of like, do I say something? Do I not say something? What do I do? And the body was doing stuff, right? And so you said something, then I don't even know what's been going on these last few minutes, but you were on some journey. I didn't see you. And now we're all connected again. And the body's doing something that's different. And your presence can be here with that. And the rest of us, you know, thank you, Tig. And thank you, Tom. We're also having an experience, as was I and everyone else who's sitting on Zoom and your various homes. Collective. Can we be with what's here now? Can we be with the body? And you might find if it was something that took a decent amount of your attention, you might find it's helpful to get up, to stand up, to change your position and move around a little bit to let it go. And you can even literally shake it out, right? Us humans, we're the only animal that doesn't instinctively shake it out when something happens that isn't as we wish for it to be. Every other animal, they just shake it off, right? I mean, how many of you, everyone probably has like seen a walk of water, seen a dog come out of a water and Right, she knows instinctively to just shake it off. We're not so good at that. And that's why we end up spewing it at people. Fuck that, we don't wanna do that. We don't like when people spew at us, we don't wanna spew at them. And we can't metabolize everything ourselves. Like, um, what that we could, right? We just can't metabolize everything ourselves. And so the, <laughs> the shaking it out can really help to let it go and find some freedom. Ah, and deep breaths can help too. It's not usually something that I teach because I think people often get kind of sucked into their breath and controlling their breath, but try it and see if it's supportive for you. The nice big inhale in your own rhythm, nice big inhale and an audible exhale. Ah, letting it out, letting it go. And again, Ah, and one more. Ah, the letting go of that practice and allowing the breath to be as it is. And if the breath is a supportive anchor for you, resting into awareness of the breath. The key word here being resting. Not chasing after or trying to make some particular way, but resting, resting in awareness. We can also rest in awareness of the sensations in the fingers our toes. The body more broadly. Awareness of this body resting here and you feel it can you experience it resting eyes open eyes closed whatever works for you there's no right way to do this what supports us is always changing and so we learn to listen in to discern for ourselves in this moment, what's helpful for me? Because you're always changing too. Cultivating rest, rest, rest. It's a radical act, this practice. 
The Buddha was a radical. And we're resting in awareness. Open, broad, spacious awareness. or a focused awareness. Finding balance. Feeling the body resting down into the earth. Being held. Feeling the hug of gravity. Mother Earth, Mother Earth holding us close. And exploring, if you will, sound as an object of awareness, resting in to the experience of hearing. Hearing the arising and passing of all these conditioned sounds. Sounds in the body. Sounds in 
the immediate environment. And sounds that are a little further outside. Arising and passing. as all conditioned things do. Each breath arises and passes. Each thought arises and passes. Each emotion each sensation of the body all these conditioned experiences Arising and passing. Arising and passing. Again and again. Moment after moment. Can we be with? All these various arising and passing experiences. What are you aware of now? Can you hold it softly? A relaxed alertness.
resting and opening. Resting into the moment. Opening to whatever we might be aware of. And greeting it with tenderness, kindness, care. Resting, resting. And as much as you're able to, not foreseeing, straining or striving, but rather letting go. Opening, being receptive and curious. What's here to be held in the field of awareness? Or what am I aware of? And greeting or cultivating our ability to greet that which we become aware of with love. 
with care, with kindness, with gentleness. And actively practicing changing the channel, inclining the heart mind in a specific direction. I invite you to bring to mind a person or a non human being, an animal, or a place, or an activity. That's pleasant for you. That's nourishing, that feels good. That feeds your spirit. A person, an animal, a place, an activity that nourishes you. If meditation is what comes to mind, great. Then look for something else. An activity or a place, an animal or a person. And maybe nourishment is too big of an ask. Maybe it's just something like that that you can stand at the moment, you know, something that's neutral. 
Or maybe even that is too big of an ask. Let it go and take care of yourself. Sometimes these suggestions themselves cause us to blank out. Be kind and gentle with yourself. Just rest in as much kindness and gentleness as you have available to you. And if this activity or place or person or non-human being is available to you, rest there into that experience. See it, hear it, feel it, smell it, taste it, think about it. Bring yourself there. Allow yourself to be resourced. And notice how it feels in the body to receive this nutriment. This nourishment. And if it's helpful, spend some more time seeing it, hearing it, smelling it, tasting it, feeling it, thinking about it. Let yourself be there. And feel it in the body. Using the mind to create a new neural pathway, to create access. This nourishing experience, this resource. And maybe nothing came up, it's okay. Creating yourself with kindness and gentleness for being here. For being just as you are. I'm feeling the body just as it is, rooting down, lifting up, broadening out. I'm feeling, experiencing the vitality of this body with all of its limitations, all of its imperfections. Appreciating that for right now, you're here. You're breathing. You're hearing. And you're being. And appreciating that if that's available to you. And hearing the bell, receiving the little wake up sound. And then three invitations of the bell, allowing yourself to experience the arising and passing of sound.
Listen, listen. The sound of this bell brings me back to my true home. And if the eyes are closed, keeping them closed for just a little bit longer as we bring in movement with awareness, feeling the body move in whatever ways feel good for you. Could be little or big, stretching or self-massage. if you've been sitting cross-legged if you've been sitting cross-legged it's really nice to forward fold twists are often quite nourishing as well and as the eyes open whenever they open for you taking in the environment that you're in seeing it appreciating it or if you're not appreciating it, noticing something about it that you can appreciate. Each time I have the opportunity to practice in this space and I open my eyes and I offer that instruction, I really enjoy the colors on the wall. And sometimes I might mention that everything, I said it at least once, maybe more than once, Everything that's beautiful about this place is the responsibility of Tig, and Tig is here with us this evening. And it's really fun for me today to look around and see this fucking gorgeous blue, which I think was like ocean blue, marine blue, or something like that. And to know that when I first saw it and liked it, someone said, oh yeah, that Tig did all that. And then to get to meet Tig uh, a month ago and be reminded that we'd met several years ago and so it's such a pleasure to look at you and have you here tonight thank you for your presence yeah and so I, I said this before and i'll try to remember to say it and then maybe eventually i'll stop it as you begin to open your eyes and look around it can be super helpful to orient and there are lots of ways to orient but one is to name the colors that you're seeing like blue if you're here blue gray white tan beige brown black like let yourself name the colors. And you know, you don't have to like get the exact perfect name for the color of this gorgeous orchid, you know, pink will do, but maybe it's magenta or fuchsia, like let yourself name the colors. I've also talked about those gorgeous plants, which I, I, I think of Cage and how beautifully she cares for them. Shapes also you can get into the actual shape like rectangle, square, or just linear and circular. The specific naming of what you're experiencing directly can regulate the nervous system. And if you're living in this crazy, modern, fucked up world, your nervous system is dysregulated. That's just how it goes. Sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but it's part of what's happening. And so we practice to care for that. Yeah, so thank you for your practice. So it's spring, right? And it's kind of exciting. And lots of thoughts have been arising for me as I named. But one of them one of them is a simple truth that with every new beginning comes some other new beginnings end. Not my words. 
maybe a song arises in your mind, maybe not, depends if you've heard it. <laughs> By these daffodils, which I was given on my birthday on March 4th, they're kind of coming to their end. They're, they're getting dry. They're starting to, I don't know what they're doing exactly, but stiffening up. You wouldn't choose to purchase these <laughs> <laughs> in the state that they're in. And it's the, it's the Persian New Year. So it's a new beginning. It's a new beginning. And with beginnings come ends. What if that wasn't a problem? What if we could touch that when we're feeling an end? Really touch like, oh, that's allowing for a new beginning. We grieve the ends so much. Of course, when something's unpleasant, we really want it to end. But those things that we like in our lives, we, we don't want them to end so much. Maybe there's some kind of difficulty or pain, a physical pain or an emotional pain we've been navigating. And then we get freedom from it for a while. That freedom is luscious. And then it comes back. Right? That's how it is. That's how it is. And it's not bad. It's not wrong. It's not a punishment. It's just the, the natural flow of things. You know, whether it's the, you know, the flow of the sound, right? It begins and ends. And as it ends, if you are attuning to it, perhaps you're more attuned now. Perhaps you're a little bit more alert, a little bit more interested. And maybe nothing amazing happened the next, but that experience of being more attuned, more interested is energizing. It feels good. There's a, there's a newness there, an opportunity there. There's a, a short poem from Thich Nhat Hanh that's often offered to, for practice in the beginning of the day, but with this new year and the new beginnings of spring and in my own practice, but to offer you today is the idea that this is also available to us any time when we remember, right? When we, we recognize a moment of suffering and some moment of wakefulness, it's like, oh, right, I can, I can wake up to this. And the, the words are, Waking up, I smile. 24 brand new hours are before me. I vow to live fully in each moment and look at all beings with eyes of compassion. And so if you're anything like me, like that's not always possible. And I forget all the time. But that daily practice in the morning that I say that to myself, waking up, I smile, 24 brand new hours are before me. I battle the fill in each moment, look at with eyes of compassion. Like it makes it more possible. And these days, that's been one of the three things that I that I say in the morning, in the beginning of my meditation or at the end, which I've really been practicing with in a deep way. And, and it ends up being so slow, just like so slow. And more and more awareness of waking up right that's what we're cultivating that's what we're trying to do here is wake up to cultivate presence and awareness to wake up not just in the morning when we wake up but like i had an experience today when i was on a short walk as i came out of my apartment building i could really see sometimes you can see and sometimes you can't see and sometimes the seeing and not seeing is because of my mood and sometimes the scene that scene is because of how clear the air actually is. So I don't know if today was a combination of both. But as I looked down Dolores, I just felt like I could see 
so far south down Dolores Street. And it was gorgeous. And I was able to appreciate it. I was able to appreciate it because I was here. So I wasn't like spinning out about yesterday or tomorrow, right? Waking up, I smile. And this, oh my God, the smile. A couple of weeks ago, Eve talked about the smile. Also, but this smile, this capacity Technon offers that we can bring a smile onto our face, even when we're not feeling a smile so much in here. So often we think that the smile comes because we're feeling good in here, but the word, the inverse can work also. Right? So this practice of smiling upon waking up, and we can do that in our formal meditation practice too, right? You get lost in thought and you notice, right? You notice and you notice and you notice, and like, that's a moment of wakefulness. And we can smile at that. We can appreciate that. It's like, oh yeah, waking up, I smile. Right? And when we do that in our formal practice on the cushion or walk here, however, we practice in a formal way, lying down. Then in our interactions with other people, we can have a moment of wakefulness and smile at, at our habitual response or about their regular behavior that we don't like or some horrible suffering on the street. It's like, ah, we can greet it. We can be here with it. 24 brand new hours reminds me of the possibility to live in each moment and that it's new. It's beginning again and again, it's beginning again and again, it's beginning again and again. It's not the same. You know, sometimes we think it's the same that's kind of going along like this, but it's not. It just isn't going along like this. And you're not going along like this. You look at yourself like a photograph of yourself from yesterday or last year or a little bit longer ago. You're not the same person. You're just not. You're changing all the time. And if something significant happened yesterday, then you're really different today. But even just the next moment, like it's changing, you're changing. And I vow to live fully in each moment. That's a, that's a big vow. But it's a great aspiration, right? To live fully. Our lives are short. To live fully. In each moment, in this moment, again, and again, remember again, and again, oh, in this moment, to live fully. And look at all beings, including ourselves, you know, all beings, we're, we're part of that all beings. It's not like all those beings out there. It's all beings, long, large, medium, small, short, grand, like all of us, seen and unseen, born and to be born, all beings, near and far, all beings. Look at all beings with eyes of compassion. And when someone treats you in a way that you would like them not to treat you, it can be hard to do that. It can be hard to have this be a moment of compassion. And so maybe you don't have compassion for that person in that moment or for that behavior. That's when we can bring ourselves compassion. All right, this is a moment of suffering. That didn't feel good. That is a moment of suffering. I can meet myself with the compassion. Waking up, I smile. 24 brand new hours are before me. I vow to live fully in each moment and look at all beings with eyes of compassion. And the other thing that's been on my mind today to share with you, also directly from Thich Nhat Hanh, with no ruse, right? With the new year and the spring of vernal equinox, a poem that Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, it's much more complicated than this, but a small part of it was turned into a song, which I'm not going to sing, but the small part Please call me by my true names. My joy is like spring, so warm. It makes flowers bloom all over the earth. It's 
kind of crazy. Like when I'm in that mindset, it's like I allow myself to go to that, then the crazy traffic outside or the, the racing of the engine is joyful. There's, there's a light in it. I don't know what's going on or why it's happening, but there's not an aversion to it or resisting or needing it to be different than it is. It's like, oh, there's like an energy and an excitement around it. My joy is like spring so warm. It makes flowers bloom all over the earth. My pain is like a river of tears. So vast, it fills the four oceans. And we're really able to allow our pain to be what it is and not trying to fix it or fight it or make it better or kind of skip through it or numb out or spiritual bypass or whatever. It's like, my pain is like a river of tears. So vast, it fills the four oceans. Like that's the truth. There's a pain, there's a suffering. It's, it's how it is. What if we didn't fight that? What if we acknowledge the truth of it? Please call me by my true names so I can hear all my cries and laughter at once. So I can hear that my joy and pain are one. Please call me by my true names so I can wake up, right? This theme of waking up, of wakefulness. So I can wake up and a door to my heart can be left open, a door of compassion. A door of compassion. And not compassion, so like we're accepting unacceptable behavior. Not compassion of like, oh, everything's wonderful, but compassion, tenderness, kindness. Greeting ourselves, greeting the moment. Oh, it's like this. It's like this. Oh, this is a moment of suffering. Can I be with this? And as we practice to feel the moments that aren't suffering, those ones that are pleasant, and I don't know, Maybe I'll get to hear from you in a minute how that was as I like guided you into touching a consciously choosing to touch a pleasant experience. As we practice tuning in to the joy, to touch the joy, to let it in, our capacity to touch and let in the sorrow increases. For when we're fighting the sorrow, we're fueling it, we're exacerbating it, we're making it bigger and worse, and it just really gets out of control. And if we haven't spent time to cultivate the, the joy, to notice what's joyful or what doesn't suck, or like the what's not horrible, the neutral, when we bring attention there and we cultivate that, we recognize that, then we can feel this more. And if we try to push this away, the hard stuff, we miss out on this stuff also. Right? So it's the joy and the sorrow. It's both sides of experience. And we're often taught to try to rest into and be with this uncomfortable thing. And sometimes we can't, it's too big. And then, so you change the channel and you bring up something that's, that you can be with, that's neutral or pleasant, something that's nourishing. And then maybe in a couple of years, you can tune into the, to the shitty stuff and touch it and transform it. And that habits have to fight it to get it to go away reduces a bit it's a practice and over time as we're able to rest into ourselves and to be with ourselves it's kind of amazing it doesn't matter so much what's going on out there anymore all those jackasses are still jackasses and we're okay because we found a resource inside of ourselves that's available. I know for me, it, it, it comes and goes, the availability of that. And I, I think that the big shift has occurred so that that is more solidly available. I'll let you know as time continues. And if that's true, if the shift that I've perceived is accurate, then I can say to you that, and then a time comes when that ground is just way more available. But that it takes time and practice and consistent gentleness and tenderness in this practice for me of resting right resting has been a profound piece of that and 
it's so different when so many of us get taught, particularly an insight of like, come back to the breath, come back to the breath, come back to the breath. And then we can feel like we're not with the breath and we're doing it wrong. Right? There's a, the, like, even if the teacher says again and again, oh, it's wonderful. And this moment of insight, oh, you remember and all of those things. No, we don't hear that. We're conditioned. Oh, you're supposed to be with the breath. It's like, fuck that. Like, it's not how it works. It's just not how it works. The breath is a great anchor. And you're not going to be able to be crazy glued to the breath ever. It's not the practice. It's a vehicle for cultivation of awareness. And I think we miss that some of the time. And resting can also be a vehicle for cultivation and awareness. And in this, this model that we live in, resting is, is radical. <laughs> it's radical. It's radical. And you know, that's why then that ministry exists. It's like, it's a whole, whole new idea in this, this era that we're in, this go, 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 do, do, do. Like a rest in awareness, rest into the body. Or rest into the candle, right? Rest into sight or rest into sound. Because sometimes the body isn't a safe place in the beginning of practice or years into practice. It takes a time. It takes time. Okay. That's enough out of me. Thank you. Hmm. There was so much that I wanted to talk about. And then I, I also think that I found myself a little excited and, and disjointed for other reasons. So hope some of that landed, whatever landed, take it, metabolize it, let it serve you and nourish you. And anything that didn't land or didn't feel good, let it go, slough it off, shake it off. You know, that, that's, that's, that's me and what's arising in me getting in the way. The Dhamma is pure. Dhamma is pure. Take what you like and leave the rest. <laughs>